The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. The rotation of an insulating rod in a steady current gives physical evidence for how the laws of steady conduction determine the distribution of fields and charge densities in a system composed of a homogeneous conductor and an insulator. The conductor is a liquid, corn oil. The insulator is Teflon. A pair of plates is used to impose a potential difference. This insulating cylinder is free to rotate. It's centered between these electrodes, which will be used to impose an electric field transverse to the axis of rotation. The electrodes and cylinder are immersed in slightly conducting corn oil. As we apply the potential to the plates, the threshold of about 20 kilovolts is reached and the cylinder begins to rotate. Which direction is a matter of chance? You need two more pieces of information to explain this experiment. The Teflon rotor is a very good insulator compared to the corn oil and the oil has a relaxation time on the same order as the period of rotation. The rotor acts as an insulator in series with the regions of conducting liquid adjacent to the electrodes. As surface charges build up on the electrodes, they induce neighboring surface charges of the same sign on the rotor liquid interface. A perturbation of the static cylinder carries these charges along. The motion affects the field. In return, there is a repulsion of the like charges that tends to sustain the rotation. The field affects the motion. Steady rotation is maintained because the convection of the surface charge is just compensated by its relaxation through conduction in the corn oil. The cylinder begins to rotate only because there is both an effect of the field on the motion and of the motion on the field. The rotation alters the charge distribution because the ratio of relaxation time in the oil to the time required for a point on the cylinder surface to make one revolution is about unity. The field-induced rotations of the cylinder also are responsible for this motion. These cells of fluid are spinning on the free surface of corn oil. The fluid is contained in this box, which has two electrodes lying flat on its bottom. They're separated by about one quarter inch. Bubbles injected on the surface show how the rotations develop.
passage of current through the oil results in a potential drop along the interface. From above, we see the charges on the electrodes and on the interface. Any slight fluid rotation results in charge redistribution, which encourages further rotation. The interface is unstable to cellular motions in its own plane, and the resulting cell pattern is one which reduces viscous drag to a minimum.